That's two games in a row now where we've essentially seen playoff Draymond. And I'm not talking about my guy on Twitter. I'm talking about the real playoff Draymond. And I think it goes without saying, we're going to need that from him the rest of the way. But I think that we are seeing team-wide a sense of urgency, a desperateness that has come along with this now, what, five-game win streak? Let's start with the coaching staff, right? Did you notice Kenny Atkinson up off the bench the entire time last night? Not the entire time, but he was up off the bench more than he usually is, in particular, transition. When we were going from offense to defense, he was up barking, kind of trying to help set the tables, the cross matchups. And my question is, where has that been the entire season? Or at least coming out of the all-star break, right? There was a sense of urgency from the staff last night. I loved the different looks they gave Luca and Kyrie. But more importantly, it's not just about giving different looks. It's about when you do it, right? And I thought the timing of when they sent two and they did different things was much better than we had seen in the past. But again, I think the sense of urgency, you can see it team-wide. Now, we finally got an update on Kaminga. He had a full conditioning workout yesterday with Salbrini, and it sounds like he's going to play Thursday in Houston. But I've heard several people say, hey, we're winning without him. Like, the, the worst part, someone said, the worst thing about Kaminga being gone is we haven't missed him. I don't think that's really fair. I don't really think that's fair, and, and I'll tell you why. I think, again, back to the urgency and the desperateness of this team. I think that that the timing of Kaminga's absence sunk up with a team that was facing do-or-die type of games. And so everyone's effort level has been raised and urgency has been raised, and it just so happens to sync up with Kaminga missing these four games. But does it stir up this Kaminga or Wiggins conversation, again, that we had for a better part of the season, an either or type of thing. Again, I don't think it should, but it is also something that you, it's very obvious, right? There's only so many opportunities, right? There, in, in, it's easier to get Wiggins involved when Kaminga's not playing because he's just naturally going to get more touches, right? But I, I still think the solution is to figure it out and, and get them both touches by cutting touches maybe elsewhere. But, you know, Andrew Wiggins, you knew he was going to have a big game against Dallas because he always does, right? And is it Dallas or is it Luka? Because I think Luka right now, not only is maybe a top three player in the league, he's top three as far as guys you don't want to lose to. Never mind the fan base, right? But even the players in the league, the peers, his peers, because he always has this shit-eating grin on his face, right? And I think that it, it just, it, he, he, he rubs it in without rubbing it in, right? He's very good at that. And so maybe that's perhaps part of Wiggins playing well against Dallas and Luka. Take nothing away from Luka, man. He is that guy. But, you know, he, he is your boy who you almost fight every Saturday morning down at the courts, right? And then you end up having a beer with him later that night, right? When, when, you, when, you, when the whistle blows and he just, he does a lot of subtle things, I think, and he, and he plays psychological warfare. And that brings me to Steph. Look, I think it was very clear, Steph, whether it's the ankle, the wear and tear of the season, he didn't have his burst, he didn't have his leg. So that doesn't help his cause from the get-go, right? But I think there's an element with Luca, and I said it to, in today's breakdown, which I think was a good one. Y'all can go check it out on my Patreon right now. Support the channel. I will be covering the playoffs regardless of where the Warriors sit. So those of you that have been thirsty to get coverage from other teams during the playoffs, perhaps, check it out. Um, but I think that there is an element with Luka. And again, talking about the way he rubs it in and just his, his aura, if you will, I think he kind of seduces other star players into kind of the one-on-one -on -one tough shot making game. And I think Steph got maybe a little seduced into that, where Luca ultimately he usually wins that battle, right? He's, he's as tough a shot maker as it gets. And then Kyrie, maybe a little part of that, right? Luca and Kyrie come to town. And as another star in the league, it's kind of like, oh, I can, you know, you maybe get a little out of pocket trying to shot match with those two players. But I also think that Steph is adjusting to being more of a distributor. Right During this win streak, I don't know what he's averaging. It's got to be six, seven, maybe even eight assists per game. Maybe not that high. But he, you know, working with Trace more in the pick and roll and Draymond, to his credit, finishing more on the roll. So you know, all in all, I, I kind of look at it as a good thing in, 
for them to be able to get that win and Steph shoot that poorly, um, you know, it, it, a big picture is a good thing. I, I thought downhill, he was too relaxed, right? He, he didn't have that, that change of pace burst that he needed. I guess my question would be is if they do take care of business against Houston Thursday, uh, do they chase that eighth or seventh spot or do you perhaps rest Steph um, a game or two getting ready for the play in, in that nine tenth spot with whomever that may be. I guess we'll have to, we'll have to figure that out as that approaches, you know, one, one step at a time, this Houston game is not going to be easy, man. It's going to be very physical. And I am, I am a little concerned that the team is kind of having to tap the nitrous button and use a lot of energy down the stretch of this season. How much are they going to have left if they do get in to the playoffs? But again, I'm getting ahead of myself here. Let's talk about Moses Moody. Four threes. But to me, what was more impressive is the defense. I knew he could shoot. Now, he had been struggling to shoot. I thought part of it was shot selection and the other part of it was rhythm because he wasn't getting clear rotational minutes. But the last, what, two or three games, he's been making the three ball. But defensively, I think he's figuring out who he is. And, you know, when he came out of Arkansas, he was advertised as this three and D guy. And then it was like, oh, Maybe not quick enough to, to, to guard some of these guys on the perimeter. He's certainly got the length and the strength, the want, the physicality. But what I think he's figuring out is, again, he's not athletic enough. Like Wiggins can kind of just stay in front of you, right? He can, he can kind of, and, and, and he's too reactive at times. Honestly, he's not proactive enough at times, but he's athletic enough where he can just stay in front of you. Moody, he can't do that. He, he's got to be proactive defensively, meaning he's got to stab at the ball. He's got to bump. He's got to make guys uncomfortable and make sure they don't get to do what they want to do. And that's something really all defenders should do, but they don't, right? And I think Moody's figuring that out. Hey, I got to make guys uncomfortable. I got to bump them. I got to be physical. I got to stab at the ball. Don't let them get into a rhythm on me. And his physicality, his energy level, if he's going to shoot like that, I don't know how you can't play him 15, 20 minutes a game. And that's being modest. And then Chris Paul shows up in a big game. What do you know? Right? That's never been the question with Chris Paul. It's never been, is he going to show up in the big moment? It's, is he healthy enough to play in the big moment? Right? So fingers crossed that he has a clean bill of health during this stretch run here, but he had some crucial baskets in that second unit, man, Pajemski. I know it was kind of a joke that he's mini Draymond. Steph and Dray were laughing at him and stuff. But the one thing that is very Draymond-like is his ability to, to rake and take, grab and go, as they say, off the glass. Now, he's not in the paint as much as Draymond to hit the defensive glass. But when he does, and his, his ability to push the pace got us a lot of early offense. And there was a lot of funky runs, the turnovers. I thought the turnovers... Um, a lot of them were on the, the receiver rather than the passer. There was some weird stuff with that, but it, it was obviously a big win. And I guess I think right now where we sit is trying to get into that eighth or seventh seed, right? I know I just said maybe rest Steph. Um, I know it's not likely by the odds, but with what, seven games left here, you look at the schedule of the Suns and, and these other guys, could you somehow jump into that eighth spot so you at least get two shots at actually making the playoffs rather than uh, just one and done being in that 9-10 bracket. But yeah, man, this Houston game, it's going to be physical. And oh, yeah, yeah, that's the last thing I wanted to bring up. I did not want to forget to bring this up. I thought this was a big deal. You can complain about Steph's game last night. I thought the best thing he did was, what, four minutes into the game, Gafford and Draymond get tangled up under the basket. Did you see what Steph did? Kyrie was there as well, but Steph got in the middle of him and actually backed Gafford off, had his hand on his chest, get away, removed the proximity and protected Draymond. I'm going to leave it there. It, it, it should have been doing it for the last five years. Again, it's not, not that it's right, but it's that he can. And Steph has the clout and the respect in the league. And I thought it was interesting. He didn't go to Draymond. He went to Gafford. And I was like, oh, I didn't think about that because the kind of the unwritten rule in hoops is you go get your own guy, right? But Steph has the clout, the cachet um, in the league where he can perhaps go get the other guy and be like, hey, man, just leave him alone. Leave him alone. I'm here. Are you going to do? Are you going to hit the chef? You ain't going to do that. So I love seeing that from Steph last night, despite, uh, you know, the poor shooting performance. A win is a win. Hit that like, share, and subscribe. I'm out, y'all.